So here is the sample Canvas app that I put together showing how you can query Azure table storage. So if I run this really quickly, you'll see there's two fields here. There's an organization and a state. I'm going to search for Acme. And when I click query data, we will see that the table gets updated and you can see the organizations with that. They also added another filter. So if I wanted to search for Acme or the state of, in this case, Virginia, let's go ahead and query that. And you'll see I get another result set. You could also combine that to be and. I just wanted to show the or logic with the OData query syntax. So that's what we get there. Under the covers, this is just using Azure Table Storage. So you can see that these are the actual fields that I have in Azure Table Storage that I was querying. The next step I want to do is show you how does this actually work. Now the key to this solution is we're actually using Power Automate flows to talk to Azure Table Storage. We then take the results from that and we pass it back to the Canvas app. So if you look at the first action here, this is a Power Automate flow. The first action is actually going to um, wait for Power Apps to call it. So that is the glue that lets you talk from Power Apps to Power Automate. We then have another step here, which is the Azure Table Storage connector, which is going to query the table storage. So you can see right now I've got the connection settings for my specific table account. And then if I go into the advanced options, that's where you actually have the ability to query. So this syntax here is just called OData syntax, and it's you can do a search online to figure out some of the different operations you can use. But in this case, if I were to go to the Storage Explorer, you can see that there's a organization column and a state column, and that is what we're querying here. So we're going to say that when the organization exactly equals this first value, filter that, and then we're going to combine that with an or, and we're going to say or if the state equals this exact value. Now, how did I get this right here? So let me just back out for a second. What you would do is if you had a space where you wanted to add another parameter, you can go down here and you can say, see more, and then just say, ask in Power Apps. That creates a new variable that you can pass into the flow. So that's how I created that initially. And then when you go into Power Apps, you go over here, you can actually see that this interprets those different parameters. So I have two parameters when I query that with Power Apps. So that's kind of how that all works together. But if I go back for a second here, so let's um, go back. I'm going to undo that last step here. And so now that is how it was set up before. Now, the last thing that we're going to do here is we're actually going to send a response. Now, Power Apps, there's a built-in Power Apps response. However, that doesn't give us the ability to pass a table back to Power Apps. So the way to get around that is you use instead of the Power Apps respond action, you just use the plain response action. And this lets you just pass the raw uh, value that you get from the table and put it back into Power Apps. So in this case here, what I did is I'm actually in the body just returning the results of the request that where we're querying the data. And let's just see, how do we test this, right? So I'm going to go to test. We're going to say manually test this. And for the first one, this is going to be the organization. So in that case, it's going to be Acme. And then we'll say for the state, we're going to um, make that Virginia. And we'll go ahead and run that. And in a second, we'll see the result from that. So we go into response. And now when we go down here, you can see these are the rows that only have Acme or the state of Virginia. So notice this is Acme, but Maryland, but because we're doing the or syntax, that's why we see both. You could also go to show raw uh, response, and this is where you can now see everything coming in. Now the last key to all of this is what we want to do is we want to take what's in the body and actually then format the response correctly so that Power Apps knows how to interpret that. So I'm just going to copy literally just the array inside of the body right there. And when I go to edit this, there's an advanced options on the response. And what I can do is I can say generate that from a sample. So we're just going to literally paste in what I just copied from the body and say done. That now gives the right metadata so that the Power Apps Canvas app, when it's calling it, knows exactly the fields it's getting back. And that's why when I have this table control here, it knows that there's different fields that are available. So if I click on this table field for a second, let's try this one more time, go to data table. 
Now, if I go to edit fields here, what you'll see is that if I wanted to add a new field, I have other fields available. There's an E tag property, which is always going to be included. However, because I already have the other ones there, they're already there. And so if I cancel out of here, you can see that the organization is there and the state is there. What I like about this flow is that if you wanted to use other APIs and they're O data based, you could do the same pattern. So you could call that uh, interface, you could get the results back, and then you could format it with Power Automate to then have it so you could parse it nicely inside of Power Apps. Now bringing this all together, so what we've got here, right, we've got a text input control, which is the organization, and this has its own name, text input org name. I also have an input control for state, and this one's te text input state name. On the action for this button, you can see that what we're doing is we're calling a flow. It's a slightly different name, but it's the same thing that I showed you before. And in this case, I'm passing it the input from one text box, which is organization, and then the input from the state name, which is the other one here. And then the other thing we're doing is we're just using this little function called set. Set just means take the results, whatever you get back from this flow and put it into a variable. And in this case, the variable is a table, which is why it then gets formatted here. And this control is smart enough to know when the thing changes, update the data. So if we go here, we can preview all of this. And let's remove the state Virginia. So it's just going to look for Acme as the organization. When we query this, we only get two results back, right? And then if I were to, let's switch it to Contoso for the org. And we'll query that. We only have one record back for that. Lastly, when I went into here, if you go into Power Automate, this is how you can see your connectors. One little tip, if you're going to make changes to your Power Automate flow, you want to go into here and just refresh your connection. And that is the best way to then make sure that those things automatically get updated inside of your Canvas app. So just a little pro tip there. I hope this is helpful just to kind of show you a quick little overview of how all of this works. Um, lastly, this thing here, this control, if we go into here, is just the data table control. So you would drag that onto the screen, and then what you would do is in the items parameter, just set that to the variable that you're storing from the action. Lastly, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know, but I thought maybe just a nice little video would be helpful.